All right, let's get some more now on the latest hacker attack and its implications from former MI5 agent Annie Mashon, now uh, joining us live here on RT. Good to see you today. Thank you for sharing your Sunday with us. Do you think, uh, do you think cyber attacks are an effective way to protest? I mean, does anyone really pay that much attention to them? Well, obviously they do. I mean, this is getting worldwide headlines. And I think that this is a new front in protest in the sense that uh, there's been such a crackdown across many, many countries, including across the West now, against people who take to the streets to protest an issue. Um, if you can do it over cyberspace, you get global awareness of what you're doing and the message you're trying to put out. And this is precisely what Anonymous has achieved with this um, publicised uh, um, assault against certain Israeli websites. Now, let's not say, let's not call them attacks. They are um, distributed denial of service um, attempts against certain countries and web, uh, certain websites. So what we're seeing here is a sort of automated um, mass influx into certain websites that cause them to crash. So they're not trying to steal anyone's information. They're not trying to get your bank details or anything like that. What they're just trying to do is make the websites of certain governments and big organizations crash so that people can be aware that there is an issue here that needs to be addressed. OK, so so ultimately getting the message out there, getting some information around the, on, on the World Wide Web, ultimately you don't call it an attack. But, you know, uh, when, when, when an a when a course of action is taken like this, I mean, I, I, mean I, I need to call it an attack on a website. I mean, do, do you think it poses any real threat because ultimately all, all I can see really is, is a matter of inconvenience. It is very much a matter of inconvenience to the websites that are under assault, but of course it does get a lot of publicity. Um, the difference between this and real hacking, real cyber attacks, can be seen very starkly with what happened when the US and the Israeli governments committed an act of cyber terrorism when they attacked the Iranian nuclear production facilities. Uh, when they released the Stuxnet virus. Now, this was a first where you have Western governments colluding to attack the infrastructure of another sovereign country, which is not deemed to be a threat by those governments. Um, of course, from the 2007 National Intelligence Estimate pulled together by all the American intelligence agencies, they assessed that Iran was not trying to develop a nuclear weapons capability. And yet, the US and, the, and Israel both used Stuxnet to try and attack their nuclear facilities knowing they weren't a threat. So that is cyber terrorism. That is what a real cyber attack looks like. And of course, this has ramifications now because the Stuxnet virus went out to attack these precise facilities, but it's now out there in the wild. It can be used and abused and, and uh, mutated by real cyber criminals out there. So what the US and the Israeli government did with Stuxnet is actually far more damaging than any protest movement trying to do bring down forget. certain websites in we certain countries. That's very interesting what you say there, Annie, about a, a, how ultimately a, a government or a government's military getting its own hands on some sort of what you call cyber terrorism is much more uh, devastating than perhaps uh, something put out there by, by Anonymous. But uh, with American and, and European governments uh, seemingly uh, increasingly trying to clamp down on such moves as we see from Anonymous today, uh, do, do, do you think we could see further clampdowns on people who do these kind of things on the internet? Absolutely. I mean, we've seen over the last decade many, many attempts legally to put new laws in place that will stop freedom of expression, freedom of our right to ingest information over the internet. Um, you know, there's been many, many assaults by the Western governments, um, usually in the name of trying to protect copyright or stop piracy on the internet. But of course, once you get those laws in place to do that, those laws can be further abused by intelligence agencies, etc. So we've had a whole range of nasty laws undemocratically foisted on countries, CISPA, SOPA, ACTA, um, and also things like the illegal arrest, SWAT style FBI illegal arrest of Kim.com in New Zealand to take down his site Mega Upload in order to officially protect copyright, but actually to stifle freedom of the free flow of information over the internet. So I think the governments are very aware of this potential threat, and it's almost like an arms race to try and take away our freedoms, and we need to push back and ensure that we keep the freedoms that have been hard won over the last 500 years. All right, our former MI5 agent Annie Mashon joining us live here on RT. A great pleasure. Thank you very much indeed.